Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over the Maya point light. I'm going to be rendering an Arnold, but I'm going to be using the Maya point light. Uh, just got some geometry set up here uh, with some shaders, like I got a, my wax which has some uh, scattering and transmission. I got my like paper shade that has uh, subsurface scattering and also has transmission, like a gold plate. A wooden tabletop and then like a wallpaper wall or I guess it's like a plaster wall it doesn't matter I just used the Maya noise and the bump and have most of the settings at default so nothing too complicated in the setup uh, all right so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a point light which is really good for things like a uh, little candle light or uh, like light bulbs that sort of thing so I'll make a point light which I can bring up here to where uh, to where I can expect uh, my little candlelight or my light bulb or whatever you want this to be uh, where I can expect to find it. So uh, let's see what we get by default, which this is from a little test that I was doing. And obviously we're looking way too dim here. Uh, so instead of messing with the intensity, I'm just going to up the exposure in the Arnold section, which these both, intensity and exposure, both control the same math. It's uh, just different ways of arriving at that number, uh, which I'm still looking a little dim. I'll go like 10, render, refresh, render. All right. Yeah. And by default, uh, these are the kind of results that you'll get, you'll get like a, a yeah, w w what you'll get is like these really crisp cutoff points uh, uh, for the light, and it will just uh, emit light evenly in all directions. Let me uh, remove the shade here, and then see what we get. Yeah, so it'll just be this uh, real diffuse lighting coming from that central point in all directions and okay and to get more photorealistic and uh, the reason for that uh, for all the, these like really crisp looking uh, edges in the render is because this light source is infinitely small and, and no light source is infinitely small uh, so you're not going to get very photorealistic results with the uh, default settings here on the point light. What you're going to have to increase is the radius here. And that will start to soften things up, which I'll bring my shade back to get. And you'll see that this edge isn't quite so crisp even with the um, the lack of uh, yeah it isn't quite so crisp even with uh, even with the lack of sampling here uh, as uh, my progressive refinement comes in which I obviously I don't have my samples set all too high uh, for the sake of uh, not taking a long time with these edits for the render and all right, so now let's continue here with the point light settings. And uh, if you would, if you would like, you can even see the light in your render. So, uh, which by default, of course, you don't see the light. But if I turn my camera to one, that will allow me to actually see the little sphere here in my render. And. Uh, also, I can use my color temperature on my point light to bring it sort of down into those like candlelight sort of colors. And that's about all there is to it. I, I mean, I can up my light samples uh, to reduce my noise some. But you can see that cleaned up a lot of this on the edge. But uh, the 
does it really matter? Uh, the last thing that I suppose I'll note is that uh, you won't really get results if you're trying to use this uh, decay rate at the top. Uh, if you want to control a, a, any sort of uh, have any sort of controlled decay on how far this light reaches, you're going to want to use a light filter, which is going to be all the way down at the bottom here. And here I can once again take the shade off, and then the differences will be a little bit more uh, clear as I make different edits. Uh, all right. So let's say add, light decay, add, and then I can go into this tab. And then you have your different attenuations for where the K, because you can have the decay start from either end. So you're generally going to want to use a far attenuation. And basically the start is when it will start to decay, which you can just leave at zero. Uh, and then if I set this to like 10, my light will decay uh, quite early, you'll see. And then the further I set this out, the farther my light will reach. And so I could set this to like 100. Keep going and just like dial in those values to a uh, dial in whatever I want my decay to be and if I want my decay and if I want my light to be at full brightness for like a while I could have it start further out which maybe I'll make this more like 30 and so on and so forth uh, that way you can keep it brighter here but dimmer as it goes further and further out, however you want to fine tune it, but that's basically all you could possibly really need to know about just using the point light and rendering with it in Arnold. Uh, yeah, let me bring my shade back and render, refresh, yeah, generally we're uh, we're looking good. So yeah, uh, that's the point light and rendering with it. Uh, yeah, just always look at your documentation so that you can get a, a good idea of how to uh, work with things. As you can see, it's uh, rather light for the point light. But uh, yeah, like I said, great for light bulbs or candlelight. Uh, any sort of light source. You just basically always want to make sure that you increase the radius uh, so that uh, uh, so that you can get more photorealistic results as opposed to an infinitely small spec which will not give you photorealistic lighting and uh, okay yeah so anytime you want to cast light in all directions the point lights your guy that's all that's all I have to say about that uh, with these shorter tutorials I always feel like I need to say more but that's it uh, have a nice day <laughs>